And I gave you a graph of, with a sinusoidal equation. The hardest part for most people is windows. They just wing it. You shouldn't be winging windows, okay? Because from an equation, can I get the max and min really quickly? Yeah, let's do that. So I can get the maximum really quickly. So let's talk about this. Remember that, I don't even know what's going on. Uh, remember that in this, um, in this unit, we talk about um, being able to get an equation. We talk about equations that are going to come from things that are circular, like make circles over time, like a Ferris wheel, or it could be a pendulum, something with a constant max, constant min, back up to a constant max, constant min, and following a constant time, or period, right? If we have a constant period, so it takes the same amount of time to go from a max to a min, or a max to a max, right? That's a constant period, or a min to a min, and we have the same max and min that's happening, we can represent it with a sinusoidal function. Those are the restrictions. We've got the same max and min constantly the whole way along, and the same amount of time to go from max to max, max to max, or min to min, or min to min, right? Then it can be represented by one of these bad boys. So, here they often use Ferris wheels because, well, they are a circle that has a constant speed, that has a constant max and min, hopefully, unless it's crumbling, which I don't want to be on one because I have a deathly fear of Ferris wheels. Ooh, I have a story. Oh, right. We're back. It was a great story. Okay. Uh, what's the maximum? How do we find it? 10 plus 12. No. How do we find it? E plus absolute value. So 12 plus absolute value of 10. Absolute value of 10, which is 22. Minimum. What do we do? D minus absolute value. D minus the absolute value. Guys, shh. Remember, I'm allowed to sidetrack. You're not. That's the cool thing about being a teacher. <laughs> Okay, our minimum is 2. Why would it be 2? Why would it be like negative 3? Because we'd like to keep our legs. That's why it's a 2. It's a fair, like I don't want my legs ripped off my body. Okay. And then it goes up to 22. That sounds awful. What is that? In, didn't, height in, was it in meters or feet? It didn't give it to us. It's in meters if you look further down. Oh. That sounds awful. If it was in feet, I could handle it. Just a little mini Ferris wheel. <laughs> 22 feet. It'd be like that. It'd be great. Like, what's the ceiling? 10? It'd be like twice this. That would be my type of Ferris wheel. I could do that. All right. Um, okay. And T is seconds after the rider gets on. Now, sometimes keep in mind that you go around these Ferris wheels really fast. Like, sometimes the Ferris wheel equations are that. It's fine. You'll be okay. All right. Sometimes they're comical. So we know that our minimum is zero. We can make our minimum zero, right? It's a little bit below. And our maximum on our calculator, we can make 24. Not the actual minimum and maximum. Those are 2 and 22. But on our calculator, we can make it a little lower and a little higher, right? Just so we can see after the top and the bottom of the Ferris wheel. Now, that would get us our y's for our windows, correct? Our y max, y min. How can we figure out what our x could be? Let's see. What is another depth, what is another word for one full rotation? Period. Nope, that's on the equation. The period. You just want to say period, I know you did. Uh, so one full one full rotation is the period. So I can find the period by doing two pi over b. Now guys, all word problems. are in radian. Because it wouldn't make sense if we rotated in 80 degrees, a circle. Circles rotate in 360 degrees, right? So if we want to make it not be 360, we actually have to deal with radians. Also, there's no degree symbol on it. So, so we get 60 seconds. So in one minute, we're flying around this Ferris wheel. Okay. So what's the maximum height? Max height? Is 22 meters. Min height? 2 meters. Two meters. 
how long after the wheel is at its lowest point does it reach its highest point? How do we figure that out? If it's 60 seconds to do a full rotation, what is it to do half of it? 30. So from a min to a max is half of a period. A max to a min is half of a period. Remember? A min to a min or a max to a max is a full period, correct? So if I'm asking you from the lowest to high, that's a min to a max. That's half the period. So I found the period was 60 seconds. So this will take me 60 seconds divided by 2. So 30 seconds. Remember, if it is a written response, on the diploma, always write a sentence. So I would say it would take 30 seconds for the wheel to get from its lowest point to its highest point. How long does it take to make one revolution? What is one revolution? Just a fancy way of saying. The period. A max to a max or a min to a min, correct? So it takes 60 seconds to make one full revolution. During one minute of the ride, at what times after the rider gets on its wheel, it gets on the wheel at a height of 20 meters? At what times after the rider gets on is the wheel? There we go. That was bad reading. That totally changes the reading comprehension when you don't read it right. Um, at what times after the rider gets on is the wheel at a height of 20 meters? I'm actually a good reader. It doesn't sound like it. So type your equation into your calculator. The equation is h of t. You'll go. So we can put it into our calculator. We would make what mode do we have to be in? It's a word problem. Radians. And then we would have to fix our window. So in our calculator, we have 10 sine. Make sure pi over 30 is in a fraction. So either actually in a fraction or in brackets to show your calculator that it's in a fraction. Because people will call me over and that's where the error is going to happen. Or they won't close the bracket. So I go mode, I make sure I'm in radian mode, I make my window be from 0 to 24. Um, for the y's or 0 to 1, I do, so it says in the first 1 minute, so I do 60 seconds. x min 0, x max 60, maybe make what, x scale 5, y min 0, y max maybe 24. Now it should show 1 revolution, which means from min to min. And they could technically do like the child is helicoptered into the top of the wheel. Like it doesn't have to be the bottom. So you have to read where the person gets on the Ferris wheel. Never seen that happen, but they could. Now, did they give me Y or X with 20 meters? <coughs> did they give me Y or X with 20 meters? Yeah. Why? So they technically gave me 20 equals 10 sine pi over 30 T minus 15. Plus 12. What could we do when we have two sides of an equation? Y2, Y1. I'm just switching it because you already have that in Y1. <clears throat> so you'd make your second, what, your Y2 be 20. And then we find out where they what? Intersect. Second trace 5. Twenty-three point eight six. Second trace five. Thirty-six point one four. Second. She's her window is is um, the standard trade window. 
But you're saying it's 6.14. That's just the initial. Yeah, I mean, Zero to 60 for the second. And you, some people put the Y just for the X by accident, too. That happens. So you can put it the way it's like 0.4. 23.86 and 36.14. Oh, so then it will give you two full ends. Oh, you did the fraction part. It's just like the exercise. Not a big deal. Did everyone get those to show up? Sometimes your equation, just you typed it in wrong, or sometimes you put the y's in the x's, x and the y's. It doesn't matter. You'll figure it out. All right. Okay, guys. <clears throat> Let's flip over and look at this one. So this one is the depth of water in a seaport is given by D of T equals 2.5 sine 0 0.64 pi T minus 1.5 plus 13.4, where T represents the hours in days, in a day. Um, put afternoon. Afternoon. Because it does matter. You need to know like time of in hours in a day when. After midnight, afternoon, after whatever. So I'm going to do afternoon. And D of T is meters. D of T is in meters. Okay, how do we figure out our windows? We need to get our min, our max, and our period. Correct? The min and the max help me get my y's. And the period helps me figure out how the heck I'm going to make my x's. So let's find the min and the max first. So it would be the y min. How do I do the y min? D minus amplitude minus the absolute value of A. So that gives me 11.9. Nope, 10.9? Yeah. Brain halted for a second. And then y max is 13.4 plus the absolute value of 2.5, which is uh, absolute value twelve uh, is 15.9. So if I go to my y scale, it goes min max scale. So if I have 10.9, I'm going to make my y min be 10, because I like being a little bit below it. I don't want the max and the min to be at the very edge of my calculator. And then I have 15.9, which some people would say 16. That's still really, really close. So I'm going to do 17. If you did 16 and you did whatever, it's, it's fine. I just want to feel a little bit more. And I'm going to make my scale be 1. So I'm going to have 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. That's the scale, right? Going up by your ticks. Okay. I need the period, so I'm going to go P equals 2 pi divided by the period. What's the period? Period is not real. Once again, do not have a period on your diploma. They will wonder what is wrong with you. 0 0.64 pi. But wait, there's going to be a time where you need to write down period. Sometimes you have to explain why. And if you explain, like, the period is this, if there's going to be like, what is... <laughs> Who is this teacher teaching this? What in the heck is the period? If they, if they bring it up and I'm marking it, I'll just be like, I have no idea why anyone would be so stupid to write that. Like, what does that even mean? I will deny it. <laughs> what happens if I single you out in me, like at the end I give a thanks to my teacher, Mrs. Left? Left. Left. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Left, for the amazing analysis. Mrs. Left said the period is this. <laughs> at Holy Trinity yeah, Academy, well. you can fire her now. Um, <laughs> 3.125. So what could I make my window be? Well, if T is time, my minimum should be zero, right? Because that doesn't make sense to have it anything else. Now, this thing repeats itself every 3.125 hours. So 
if you want, I'd like trying to see, unless they limit me to like, the, in the first three hours or the first six hours, I like seeing two periods of the graph because I like having just enough just in case. So I'm going to make it be seven, my X max, and then make it go up by one, we'll say. You could do 24. If you do 24, that's the first 24 hours of the, that would be one full day. You could do that, see a few. It's up to you. Now the range, just to cover that, would be y such that 10.9 is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to 15.9. So what, what notation is this, guys? What notation am I doing currently? Uh, set. set. What is this? Uh, interval. If they ask you for a specific one, you have no choice. You have to do whatever one they have. Interesting. Set has y such that. Actually, I screwed up. Is there a y variable anywhere in this question? No. No. What should those y's be? No. B of t. T is x. Inconvenient, but correct. Okay, guys. <laughs> uh, okay, 9 a.m. What would that be? 9? No. It would be t It's afternoon. So T would actually be 21. Why can I start at like 12? Because I wrote afternoon, and if the diploma says that, you can't just be like, hey, I want to do midnight. You're weird for that, okay? Just do No. Why don't we just do military Okay, friends. Okay, so I picked afternoon. Because if I picked after midnight, you guys would write 9. And then on a test, if I gave you afternoon, you would write 9. So I picked the harder one so that you guys actually think when it comes to a test. What does 9 a.m. mean? Well, I have to go look. Does it say afternoon or does it say after midnight? If it says after midnight, I put 9. If it says afternoon, I put 21 because it takes me 9 plus 12, correct, to get me there. It would take me 12 to get me to midnight and then nine more to get me to 9 a.m. All right, we don't even have to, we can type it into our calculators if we like, but what we could also just do is D of 21, which is 2.5 sine, open a bracket because it's going to in your calculator, 0.64 pi, um, 21 minus 1.5 plus 13.4. So when it's T, it's even easier. You can literally just type this into your main screen. But what you do have to make sure you're in is what? Radians. Because word problems are in? Radians. So we go to our main screen and we type it in. You don't have to. You're just putting it into your main screen. <laughs> you will be doing graphs in a second. Anyway. Watch that when you open said bracket, you have to have a closed said bracket for it. How does my window change? Okay. <laughs> Um, so guys, when people put mins and maxes in, so we figure it out, we find 10.9 and 15.9, and then they get an answer of 27 and they still write it, it scares me, okay? If you, then either your mins and maxes are wrong or your answer is wrong. So if you're finding your mins and max algebraically by doing d plus amplitude d minus amplitude, they should be correct. So if you're getting an answer of like 27, but it maxes out at 15.9, you should be questioning, hmm, something is wrong, okay? 
Perhaps you're in degree mode. You know what I mean? Like something could be wrong. So watch yourself. All right. Now here it says, at what times during the day is the depth of water 15 meters? 15 meters. So that would be my Y, right? So I would have 15 equals 2.5 sine 0 0.64 pi T minus 1.5 plus 13.4. And I would have Y1. Why too? But you have to make sure your window is appropriate, right? So you'd have to change your window to what we had up there. So we have zero, oops, not in my window, zero, seven, one, ten, seventeen, one. And then I put in my equation. So there are going to be a whole bunch of times, correct? If it's during the day, they would have to be more like in the first 24 hours or in the first 15 hours. If not, it's going to keep repeating itself. Yeah, that's why I wrote. Okay, it's seconds, but I'm not done. I'm just literally writing the time. So I have T. Oh, okay. Hey, we actually have third one, bro. Your window isn't as big as my window. But there should only be two of them, right? No, there would be a whole bunch because you're going to do 24 hours. Right? Yeah. Uh, why is the x window like 0 and 7? Because the period that this graph repeats itself is every 3.125 hours. Aren't there like 12 hours in a day? Or it's supposed to be <laughs> Yeah. So, <laughs> this is what I was literally just talking to John about it three seconds before you asked the, asked the question. Not so, he said, How are we getting more, quite, more answers? And I said, Well, you have to extend it. And then he said, oh, okay, I have to extend it. And I said, yeah, you can't actually do seven. You would have to do 24 to get the whole day. And you get a whole bunch. And then he went, Ugh. And then you said, why is it a seven? Oh. And do I have to make it 24? I'm not good at listening. It's okay. It's all right. Um, they probably aren't going to make you find 12 answers anyway. So my key thing here is, is at 1.85 hours, that is not a time of day, correct? Okay. Everyone paying attention. This would be, if it's afternoon, this would be 1 p.m., correct? Now, if I put 1.85, I have a fighting chance that you guys will not write 1.85 p.m. If I give you the answer, though, of 1.06 hours, I will get 1.06 p.m. Still not correct. But at least, you, and you won't catch yourself because, but I hope you catch yourself at 1.85 p.m. It does not make sense. <laughs> so what do we have to do? We have to take 0 0.85 times 60. 0.85 times 60. 0.85 times 60, because there are 60 minutes in an hour. And I'm doing 0.85 of an hour. So I go 60 times 0.85, and I write 1.51 p.m. So honestly, I know that if the answer comes out as like 1.06, You've got 1.06, you guys will write 1.06 p.m. I hope you stop yourself at 8.5. If it was 1.06, this would not be 1.06 p.m., right? That would be 1.06 hours. I would have to take 1, times that by 60, and get the actual time. 
So this would be 151. If I take the 2.72 hours, then that would be 60 times 0.72, and I would get uh, 2.43 p.m. And then if I did 4.97, that's really close to 5 p.m., but it's not 5, okay. it would be 5.58 p.m. And yep, that would not be 5. <laughs> 4.58, good guess. Be close to 5, so it would be 5.58. Oh, that's so bad. 5, 8, 4 hours. And I would get 5.50 p.m. And I would have to keep going if it was in the first day. Right? The last one I want to go through, and we keep going, they won't make you find 27 answers. They'll limit it in like the first six hours or something, or by, by 6 p.m. or something, and then we would be done, right? <laughs> this one I want to do, because people get this one wrong. So how long is it greater than 12 meters for the first 12 hours? So I'm going to have to go, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do 12 hours. I'm going to do for the first se uh, seven. <laughs> My window's set to seven. I'm going to do the first seven hours. And we want above 12. So where are we going to put the 12? In Y2. In Y2. And then I'm going to find out where they intersect. Your teacher would do 12 or 7 hours. That's what it is. Yeah. So I want above. So the first one is from 0 to... So many years from now. The first one is from 0 to 0 0.23 hours. So I'm in my first increment, my second increment, where it's above. It's from 1.204372. Remember if you arrow up, you can get arrow up or arrow down, you can get on the flat line, which takes you faster to the next intersection. 3.35812.32. And then my next increment. Be 4.3293783768. Six point four eight three one two three two. Then what do I do with these times? Subtract. And I get zero point two three hours for this first increment that it's over, then subtract the next ones. You're gonna see something in a second. This one two point one five, let's say, hours. Weird, it's the same. How is that possible? It's periodic, right? It's periodic. So if you get the full part of the next full part, it would be 2.15. So we just add them all up. 2.15 plus 2.15 or times 2 plus Right? You have to start at zero. Like you can't start anywhere different. And it's above twelve. Like it's above twelve before zero. Like when I look at the actual graph. Yeah. I'm 